The Divine Inspiration of the Bible by Arthur W. Pink. Chapter 10. The completeness of the Bible demonstrates its divine perfecton. The antiquity of the scriptures argues against their completeness. The compilation of the Bible was completed more than 18 centuries ago, while the greater part of the world was yet uncivilized. Since John added the capstone to the temple of God's truth, there had been many wonderful discoveries and inventions, yet there had been no additions whatever to the moral and spiritual truths contained in the Bible. Today, we know no more about the origin of life, the nature of the soul, the problem of suffering, or the future destiny of man than did those who had the Bible 1,800 years ago. Through the centuries of the Christian era, man has succeeded in learning many of the secrets of nature and has harnessed her forces to his service. But in the actual revelation of supernatural truth, nothing new has been discovered. Human writers cannot supplement the divine records, for they are complete, entire, wanting nothing. The Bible needs no addendum. There is more than sufficient in God's word to meet the temporal and spiritual needs of all mankind. Though written 2,000 years ago, the Bible is still up to date and answers every vital question which concerns the soul of man in our day. The book of Job was written 3,000 years before Columbus discovered America, yet it is as fresh to the heart of man now as though it had only been published 10 years ago. The majority of the Psalms were written 2,500 years before President Wilson was born, yet in our day and generation they are perfectly new and fresh to the human soul. Such facts as these can only be explained on the hypothesis that the eternal God is the author of the Bible. The adaptation of the scriptures is another illustration of their wonderful completeness. To young or old, feeble or vigorous, ignorant or cultured, joyful or sorrowful, perplexed or enlightened, orientalist or occidentalist, saint or sinner, the Bible is a source of blessing, will minister to every need, and is able to supply every variety of want. And the Bible is the only book in the world of which this can be predicated. The writings of Plato may be a source of interest and instruction to the philosophic mind, but they are unsuitable for placing in the hands of a child. Not so with the Bible. The youngest may profit from a perusal of the sacred page. The writings of Jerome or Twain may please, for an hour, the man of humor, but they will bring no balm to the sore heart, and will speak no words of comfort and consolation to those passing through the waters of bereavement. How different with the scriptures! Never has a heavy heart turned in vain to God's word for peace. The writings of Shakespeare, Goethe, and Schiller may be of profit to the Western mind, but they convey little of value to the Easterner. Not so with God's word. It may be translated into any language and will speak with equal clearness, directness, and power to all men in their mother tongue. To quote Dr. Burrell, In every heart, down below all other wants and aspirations, there is a profound longing to know the way of spiritual life. The world is crying, what shall I do to be saved? Of all books, the Bible is the only one that answers that universal cry. There are other books which set forth morality with more or less correctness, but there is none other that suggests a blotting out of the record of the mislived past or an escape from the penalty of the broken law. There are other books that have poetry, but there is none that sings the song of salvation or gives a troubled soul the peace that floweth like a river. 
there are other books that have eloquence, but there is no other that enables us to behold God himself with outstretched hands pleading with men to turn and live. There are other books that have science, but there is none other that can give the soul a definite assurance of the future life, so that it can say, I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Though other books contain valuable truths, they also have an admixture of error. Other books contain part of the truth. The Bible alone contains all the truth. Nowhere in the writings of human genius can a single moral or spiritual truth be found which is not contained in substance in the Bible. Examine the writings of the ancients. Ransack the libraries of Egypt, Assyria, Persia, India, Greece, and Rome. Search the contents of the Quran, the Zen, the Vesta, or the Bhagavad Gita. Gather together the most exalted spiritual thoughts and the sublimest moral conceptions contained in them, and you will find that each and all are duplicated in the Bible. Dr. Torrey has said, If every book but the Bible were destroyed, not a single spiritual truth would be lost. In the small compass of God's word, there is stored more wisdom which will endure the test of eternity than the sum total of thinking done by man since his creation. Of all the books in the world, the Bible alone can truly be said to be complete, and this characteristic of the scriptures is another of the many lines of demonstration which witnesses to the divine inspiration of the Bible.